the bond that was callable and then the company called it, uh, you wouldn't have the option of holding it until maturity. So the idea of yield to call is, is you know, like we said last time, it's the rate of return earned on the bond if it's called before its maturity date. Um, and that's what we're really concerned about. We're really more concerned for that. So let's give a, a numerical example. Let's say um, that there was a 10 year bond, let's say 10 year bonds, 10 year bonds, um, uh, let's say that there is a 5 year, um, a 5 year uh, anti-call, 5 year anti-call uh, provision, so that's obviously in there for the benefit of the uh, investor. <coughs> um, so that it can't be called immediately, you know, if interest rates immediately uh, dip, you know, the company can't call it back on the day that they issued it. Uh, they have to give the investor, you know, a certain amount of time to, to receive some coupon payments to get some type of, uh, you know, return on this bond. So there's a five-year anti-call provision. So this is a 10-year callable. It's a callable bond, um, and that just means that it's got a call provision in it. 10-year um, callable bond. Uh, that's a five-year anti-call provision. Um, <clears throat> let's say it was issued with a five percent coupon interest, and its face value is a thousand. Now, let's say that the you know. The reason why the company is going to call this is because the interest rate climate uh, is such that the interest rates have, have dropped, which would obviously push up the present value. So that's uh, you know above the face. So there's going to be a premium. So uh, let's just say that the present value is 1,400. Let's say 1,400. Um, scroll a little bit. So let's think about let's think about the timeline here. Let's think about the timeline. Let's. Uh, down the line, um, it's a 10 year callable, so that's 1, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Um, now, let's try and think about what's happening in, in each of these years. Let's say, uh, you know, we just said the present value is, is 1400, so that's being laid out today. Um, now, there's 5% coupon interest, and we know that, you know, this line over here is made up of, of lots of PMTs, all these PMTs every single year all the way through. So we know that the, the coupon interest payment over here is always going to be 5% of the face value, which is 1,000, and that equals 50. So you know, that payment um, is going to be 50, 50, and so on and so forth all the way through. Um, Future value, uh, let's say, um, oh sorry, the face value, yeah, we said is a thousand, so let's put a thousand down there. Now, the important thing to notice here is that the face value is a thousand, because if you held this bond all the way through until, you, until maturity, then you would receive the one thousand dollars back. However, in this question, we have a ten year bond, right? the way through seven, eight, nine, ten. But the story is is that there's a five year anti call provision. So they can't call the bond, you know, for the first five years, like all the way until here. Now let's say that the bond is called, right? The bond is called over here. And let's just say it's called at uh, you know, 1200. Let's say it's called a 1200, and it's always going to be called at a premium um, to to the face value. And if if you think about it, you know, the present value, if it starts at a premium, will always go down until it gets to a thousand. Um, if you started at a discount, it would always rise until it gets to a thousand. That's that's the nature of the present value of bonds. This you know, uh, this present value over time will. Um, decrease until it gets to a thousand. So if you called it halfway through, it hasn't really quite made its way from fourteen hundred down to a thousand yet. So it's kind of let's say a twelve hundred mark, um, which is is perfectly reasonable. So let's.
let's try and understand, and it's, it's pretty simple, uh, the, you know, what the variables are over here. So, let's just make some room, um, and let's put down our variables, present value, future value, PMT, I, and N. Now, in this case, I, we're going to take as the auto call this time. Now let's think about this. Let's start at the beginning of the time period. The present value we said is minus fourteen hundred. That hasn't changed. That's that's good. The coupon payment, well, that hasn't changed either. It's it's still you know a five percent coupon interest of its face value. You know, so uh, you know five percent of a thousand, um, and that equals fifty. Now n and future value are the two things that we still have, but we kind of need to have a look at this timeline to understand what they are. So, n, well, it's not 10, because if they call it after 5 years, you're only holding it for 5 years. So n is going to be 5. And finally, the future value, well, it's not 1,000, because you're not getting that 1,000 back. You're actually getting 1,200. That should be positive. You're actually getting 1,200 back. So that's your future value. The second they call it in year five, we don't care about any of this anymore. Yes, 1,000 is still significant because that is the face value of the bond. So it's significant in order to calculate what the coupon interest is. The coupon interest never changes. The coupon interest of 5% of $1,000 is decided on the day that it's issued. That never changes. Just because they're calling the bond at 1,200 at year five doesn't mean that, that you know we're going to start taking 5% coupon interest of 1,200. Well, that doesn't make sense. No, a bond is a piece of paper, and once it's printed, it's printed. Now, once it's called 1200, we don't care about any of this anymore. This becomes our, um, this becomes, you know, all we care about. This period right here. So, we've got our 1400. Uh, we've got it going on for five years. We've got our payment, which is 5% of 1000, which is 50. And yes, it would have continued on all the way to the end, but the company swooped in and said, well, we're not going to carry on paying this crazy interest rate. We want to pay a lower interest rate, so we're calling in this bond, we'll reissue the bonds at a lower interest rate. So they've swooped in and they've called it at 1200 so that future value is actually going to be 1200 And then again, you've got your PV, FV, PMT, N, and now solve for I. And yield to call comes out at 0 0.75. And that is basically all there is to say about yield to call. Next time, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look um, at a couple of things um, regarding conversions, because all of the problems we've seen so far have been in annual terms, but bonds are 90% of the time semi-annual, so we're going to have to do a little bit of conversion to